Welcome to Lecture 8. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion of min terms, and then we will begin to talk about max terms. We don't really have too much more to say about min terms, but I would like to point out one thing. Uh, let's suppose that we have the following expression for the function f of the Boolean variables x, y, and z. Let's suppose maybe that uh, f is given by a formula such as this. Now I hope that you all agree that this is a min term expansion for f. In other words, each one of these expressions is a min term because each one is a, a simple product of all three Boolean variables in either complemented or uncomplemented form. And uh, of course, just as a quick review, uh, if we wanted to write this in the little m notation, remember the way that we do this is to look at each individual min term and find out when it will be equal to 1. So the first one would be 1 when x is 0, y is 1, and z is 0. The second one would be 1 when all three variables are 1. And the last one would be 1 when x is 1, y is 0, and z is 1. And uh, if we now interpret those uh, numbers as binary numbers, then this is 2, and 111 is 7, and 101 is 5. So if we wanted to write this function in little m notation, we would have m2 or m5 or m7 which could also be written even more compactly like that. Now that's just a very quick review of min terms, but the uh, new point that I wanted to make here was simply to emphasize that the min term expansion is a sum of products expression. We can see a sum from the fact that we have the plus signs and what, what is being added are products. But not just any products, these products have to be min terms or else this would not be a min term expansion. In other words, for instance, if this first term were x prime y instead of x prime y z prime, if it were just x prime y and everything else was the same, then this would still be an SOP expression. It would be still the sum of products, but it would not be a min term expansion in that case because x prime y is not a min term since there are three Boolean variables available. But uh, so any any min term expansion, maybe I should put the word any here just to emphasize any min term expansion is an SOP, the sum of products expression. So having said that, I think we're now ready to start talking about max terms. And essentially, everything that we said about min terms, if we take the complement of that, we will get a true expression about max terms. And uh, I'll now illustrate what I mean by that. First of all, recall that a min term is equal to 1 
only for one combination of the Boolean variables. Um, I'll just say variables and zero otherwise. Well, a max term is equal to zero only for one combination of the variables and one otherwise. Now what does a max term look like? Well, let's, um, let's give an example. This is an example of a max term expansion for a function. Each one of these terms is a max term. Just like a min term is a simple product of all of the available Boolean variables in complemented or uncomplemented form. So is a max term a simple sum of all of the available Boolean variables in either complemented or uncomplemented form. So since each one of these parenthetical expressions has it is a it encloses a or, or is a uh, simple sum and in each case all of the variables are there in either complemented or in or uncomplemented form then each one of these is a max term now another point uh, recall that we name min terms according to when they're equal to one. In fact, that's that's really just about the only way we could name them if you think about it because a min term uh, is equal to zero for many different combinations of the variables. So we couldn't name a min term according to when it's equal to zero because we'd have many different choices for the name. So we name it a uh, uh, min terms according to when they're equal to one because there's only one choice then. And so each min term will have a unique label. Well likewise for max terms, since they are usually equal to one, we can't name them according to when they're equal to one. We have to name them according to when they're equal to zero, which again is just for a unique combination of the variables. So let's uh, think about that and look at this expression we have here for this function. What about this first max term here? Well, um, whenever uh, y is equal to 1, this max term will have a value of 1. Whenever z is equal to 1, it will have a value of 1. Whenever x is equal to 0, it will have a value of 1. The only situation in which this first term will have a value of 0 is when x is 1 y is 0 and z is 0. Similarly for the second max term that one will have a value of 0 only when x is 0, y is 1, and z is 1. And finally the last max term here will have a value of 0 only when x is 1, y is 0, and z is 1. So if we interpret these numbers as binary numbers, then this is the number 4, this is the number 3, and this is the number 5. So this function
could also be written as the product M3 and notice for a max term we use a capital M instead of a lowercase m so capital M ended with capital uh, excuse me capital M3 ended with capital M4 ended with capital M5 and if we wanted to put that in still more compact notation uh, now instead of using the summation symbol we use the symbol for a product which is uh, this symbol here and we would say capital M three four five Now, one interesting thing to note about uh, min terms and max terms is the following. Uh, suppose um, we have the three Boolean variables x, y, and z. Okay, if that is the case, then I think that uh, you will all agree that, um, for instance, x, y, z prime is a min term. And x prime or y prime or z is a max term. I think you all agree with that because uh, notice that uh, x, y, z prime is a simple product of all of the available Boolean variables and either Sorry about that. Okay, as I was saying, XYZ prime is a simple product of all the available Boolean variables in complemented or uncomplemented form, and X prime or Y prime or Z is a simple sum of all of those uh, Boolean variables in either complemented or uncomplemented form. Uh, so, XYZ prime is a min term, X prime or Y prime or Z is a max term. Now, uh, I suggest you stop for a moment and what I'd like you to do during this break is to find out the name for that min term and the name or label if you wish to call it that find the label for the min term and the label for the max term and then uh, turn the uh, then resume the video okay well I hope that uh, you had luck with that and uh, let's see how we would proceed to do what you were asked to do Remember that a min term is named according to when it is equal to 1. And this min term will be equal to 1 when x is 1 and y is 1 and z is 0. And if we interpret 1, 1, 0 as a binary number, it would be the binary number 6. And therefore we can say that x, y, z prime is equal to little m, because it's a min term, 6. Now let's look over here at the max term. Recall that max terms are named according to when they are equal to 0. And x prime or y prime or z will only be equal to 0 when x is 1, y is 1, and z is 0. Well that's the same combination we had before and of course then this is the binary number 6 and so we have x prime or y prime or z is equal to capital M 6 and now an interesting feature that I'd like to show you is this I claim 
that the complement of little m6 is equal to capital M6 and consequently that the complement of capital M6 is little m6. I really don't have to prove that second statement if I can prove the first statement because it would follow immediately because we know that if we take the complement twice in other words, if, if uh, M6 complement, little m6 complement is indeed capital M6, and then we took the complement one more time on each side, then uh, we would, on the left-hand side, we would get back little m6, and on the right-hand side, we'd get capital M6 prime. So that would say little m6 is equal to capital M6 prime, which is the same as this statement, just reversed. So really, we only have to prove this first statement and so let's see how that would go. Well, so uh, we want to uh, prove that x, y, z prime, that's little m6 prime, is equal to x prime or y prime or z. And I hope that you immediately recognize that this proof is just a one-step proof. This is simply one of De Morgan's theorems. This is the one that says the complement of a product is equal to the sum of the individual complements. And uh, the, the other statement up here would be the other De Morgan's theorem, which would say the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements. So in general, so I'll just say uh, use uh, De Morgan, De Morgan's uh, theorems. In general, Um, little m sub i prime is equal to capital M sub i and thus capital M sub i prime is little m sub i. Now, this uh, leads to some interesting ideas. Let's suppose that um, we had, uh, as we, uh, well, well, let's just say this. Let's suppose we have G of XYZ is equal to uh, X prime, Y prime, Z, or X, Y, Z prime, or x, y prime, z prime. And suppose we were asked to find the max term expansion For G prime of X Y Z, well, this is very, very easy to do uh, in the following way. We we begin by noting. that G is equal to, 
Now let's. Uh, I want to find out the labels for these men. The, these are. This is a midterm expansion for G, and so um, let's find out what midterms these are. We have zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero. And if we interpret those as binary numbers, this would be the binary number one. This would be six, and this would be four. So G is equal to little m one ORD with little m four ORD with little m six. Thus, G complement is. the complement of M1 ORD with M4 ORD with M6. But if we use De Morgan's theorem, it tells us that the complement of this sum is equal to the product of the individual complements. So it would be M1 complement Product with M4 complement, product with M6 complement. But remember that M1 complement is capital M1, little m4 complement is capital M4, and little m6 complement is capital M6. And so we are already done. G prime of X, Y, Z is equal to M1, capital M1, ended with capital M4, ended with capital M6, which could also be written in this form. And that is a max term expansion for G prime just that quickly. Now let's look at another question. Let's let's continue with this same function uh, and let's pose another question now. Uh, rather than finding a max term expression for G prime, let's find A max term expression ex expansion, sorry. Find a max term expansion for G. Now, previously, when we've had uh, a situation like this where we start with a sum of products expression and we want to get a product of sum expressions after all remember um, or actually I should say notice that the max term expansion uh, I should have pointed this out earlier actually um, right here I'll say um, uh, We'll, we'll point it right here. This is a product of sums expression. And that's true of all max term expansions. All max term expansions are POS expressions. just as all min-term expansions are SOP expressions. So returning then to uh, what we we're talking about down here at the bottom, um, you're now, we're given this function G, which is a sum of products expression, and, and in fact it's more than that, it's a, 
uh, min-term expansion. And now I'm asking you to find the max term expansion for this same function. And we know that the max term expansion is a product of sums expression. Well, in the past, when I've asked you to find a product of sums expression from a sum of products expression, the way that we've done this is to take the complement twice and then use De Morgan's theorems to simplify. And we've proceeded in that fashion. But there's something, uh, there's a much easier way to proceed with this in this case, and I'd like to show it to you now. So recall again that the function under consideration, if we bring this down, is equal to little m1 plus little m4 plus little m6. Now, what that means is that if we want to find the truth table for this function, it is extremely easy to find. We just uh, put the columns for x, y, and z. And then, as usual, we list all of the possible combinations 000, 001, 010, 011, 100, 101 and 111 and now we know that the function since it's the sum of the min terms m1 and m4 and m6 and we know that m1 is only equal to 1 for the combination 0 0 1 m4 is only equal to 1 for the combination 1 0 0 and m6 is only equal to 1 for the combination 1 1 and 0 then the function g itself which is the sum of those three terms will only be equal to 1 when you have one of those three cases at all other times it will be equal to 0 so in other words the, the, the truth table for g is very simply just 0 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. You see we have a 1 in the uh, row for the binary number 1, a 1 in the row for the binary number 4, and a 1 for the binary number 6. Or the, I should say binary number that represents 6. So this is the truth table for this function. Now, uh, our task, again, is to find the max term expression, or excuse me, max term expansion. For G. And I'm just going to go ahead and write down the answer, and then we'll explain why it's true. So it turns out that G of X, Y, and Z is equal to capital M zero ended with capital M two ended with capital M three ended with capital M five and capital M seven. In other words, we just look for when the function is equal to zero and that tells us which max terms will be present in its max term expansion. Now the reasoning behind this is as follows. Remember that these max terms, each one of them, will be equal to 1 most of the time. In fact, each one of them will be equal to 1 all of the time except in one possible combination of the variables. Well, the function g, in order to be, in order for it to be equal to zero, one, at least one of these terms has to be zero, 
And so the five possible combinations, we, we see that G is equal to five, excuse me, G is equal to zero, and five different possible combinations. And so we have these five max terms. The M0 max term is zero for the first combination, zero, zero, zero. M2 is zero for the combination, zero, one, zero. M3 for zero, one, one. M5 for one, zero, one. And M7 for one, one, one. And so these are precisely the situations when g will be equal to zero and this will be our answer. Notice that we didn't have to do any algebra at all. We just uh, looked at the truth table and in fact after you get accustomed to this, I don't think you'd even need to do that. You could simply say if if the min terms are 1, 4, and 6, then the max terms will be 0, 2, 3, 5, and 7. Let's uh, actually verify that this is true. Now, uh, generally I, won't, I wouldn't ask you to do that because this is going to be a little bit of algebra, but I think it's worth the effort in this case. So let's uh, see how that would go. So we want to verify that little m1 ORD with little m4 ORD with little m6 is the same as capital M0 ANDED with capital M2 ANDED with capital M3 ANDED with capital M5 ANDED with capital M7. Now since I'm uh, requesting you to do this uh, algebraically then I will go back to the method we've looked at before which is to use the Morgan's theorems, and um, we'll see how this goes. So we have, um, so I'll say uh, proof. So little m1 or with little m4 or with little m6, and remember we take the complement twice. That's the uh, technique that we're going to use here. Well, uh, if we take the, the first complement, then this is a situation where we say that the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. So we have M1 complement ended with M4 complement ended with M6 complement. And then I'll keep the other complement outside. And once again now, in this first step, I've used the fact that the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. Now, let's go ahead and use the uh, information that we've learned here. Uh, the complement of little m1 is capital M1. The complement of little m4 is capital M4 and the complement of little m6 is capital M6. So this is what we have at this point. Now, let's go ahead and expand each one of those terms. Now I'll show you the way that I like to do this. We know that each one of those terms, since each one of them is a max term, each one of them must be a sum of all three Boolean variables in complemented or uncomplemented form. We know that because that's the definition of a max term. So I'm going to go ahead and write X or Y or Z for each one of them. I have X or Y or Z for M1, X or Y or Z for M4, X or Y or Z for M6. Now. Uh, the second step, this is just the way I like to proceed. You might like to proceed in another way, but I'm just showing you one way to do it. Now, 
I want to look at the uh, binary number for 1, which will be 0, 0, 1. The binary number for 4 will be 1, 0, 0. And the binary number for 6 will be 1, 1, 0. And now finally, we note that in order for each sum to be equal to 0, which after all is the condition we want, because remember, max terms are named according to when they are equal to 0. So in order for each term, each one of these sums to be equal to 0, what do we do? We need to complement any variable that's equal to 1. So in the first one, we need to complement the z. In the second one, we need to complement x. And in the last one, we need to complement both x and y. So, I'm saying here that capital M1 is X or Y or Z prime. That capital M4 is X prime or Y or Z. And that capital M6 is X prime or Y prime or Z. So, let me write that down again now without the uh, numbers. So, we have X or Y or z prime x prime or y or z x prime or y prime or z and then this is all going to get complemented Now we're ready to go ahead and um, multiply this out. However, uh, there is something uh, interesting we can do here, uh, and, and let's uh, consider it. We can we can make our work a little bit easier in the following way. Now, uh, I don't expect you to see this right away. Uh, so don't worry if, if it didn't stick out, but it is something that's interesting to note. For these last two terms, I'm going to write the, uh, the second one as x prime or z or y, and the last one as x prime or z or y prime. Now, uh, over here on the right-hand side, I'll explain why I'm doing that. Notice that if we have A or Y, where we're assuming that A is Boolean and Y is Boolean as well, if we have A or Y ended with A or Y prime, and we multiply this out, we would get a a, which is just a, or a y prime, which would be absor uh, absorbed into a, so we don't have to write it down, or with a y, which also would be absorbed into a, and finally, or y y prime, but y y prime is a number ended with its complement, so that's zero. So a or y ended with a or y prime is simply a. Now that's going to be of significance to us in a few minutes, but it's also of significance to us now because if we if uh, we look at these last two terms and we think of x prime or y as playing the role of a, then the second term is a or y and the, the third term is a or y prime. So we can immediately say that the product of those two terms is simply x prime or z. And once again, as, as I mentioned, I wouldn't expect you uh, to notice that right away. Um, you know, it's probably faster just to, rather than 
looking for something like that at every step, it might be faster just to go ahead and multiply out uh, when you're doing an algebraic problem like this. But since this, uh, since this is an identity uh, right here, this is an identity that we're going to need in just a few moments, I thought I'd go ahead and introduce it at that point. So now, in our algebra, we've gotten down to this point, and uh, it's, it's relatively easy now to multiply out what remains. Uh, x, or x prime, of course, is zero. Uh, excuse me, I think I said x or x prime, I meant x and x prime. So x and x prime is zero. We have x z or x prime y or y z or x prime z prime and uh, then finally uh, the last term would be z prime z but z prime z of course is zero because that's a uh, uh, variable complemented, a variable ended with its complement. So when we multiply all of that out, we're left with this. And now we, uh, to get the product of sums form, we will use De Morgan's theorem that says the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. So we have x, z, complement x prime y complement y z complement x prime z prime complement and now for each one of those terms we can use the De Morgan's theorem for the complement of a product being the sum of individual complements. And so we have x prime or z prime, x or y prime, y prime or z prime, x or z. So now we have a product of sums expression but if you'll go back to the beginning remember we're trying to find not simply a product of sums expression for um, the function g we're trying to find the max term expansion and if we look at this not a single one of these terms is a max term. Uh, we have variables missing in every case. And so the question arises is, well, then how can we, or is there any way to easily turn this product of sums expression into a max term expansion? And the answer is yes. And the key to doing that is once again, using this identity that we derived up here. So let me repeat it down here. We have A oh, I'll get it in a moment. We have A or Y ended with A or Y prime is equal to A. Now, we're going to use this um, in the um, previous case up above when we were doing this problem. We use this problem, we use this principle, you might say, going from left to right. And now we're going to use it going from right to left. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So we have x prime or z prime as our first term. Well, I'm going to change that to x prime or z prime or y ended with x prime or z prime or y prime. Here I'm thinking of x prime or z prime as being a and so this term right here 
is equal to the product of these two terms using this identity right here. And you can see why I'm doing that because each one of these factors here is a max term. X prime or Z prime is not a max term, but each one of these is a max term. So let me do one more and then I'll ask you to complete this process. Uh, X or Y prime is the same thing as X or Y prime or Z ended with X or Y prime or Z prime. And now you go ahead and try to do the remaining two and then we'll finish this up. Okay, I hope that the uh, next two terms you wrote down were X or Y prime or Z prime and X prime or Y prime or Z prime. And then finally for the last term I hope you wrote down X or Z or Y ended with X or Z or Y prime. So now we have a, uh, an expression that has six max terms in it. And uh, you might think then, okay, then this is a max term expansion. But let's be careful about this. Uh, let's um, make sure that no max term is being repeated here. And the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and put each one of these uh, max terms in its order and the correct order for its variables and then to assign the uh, labels that we know about. So let's see how this would go. Uh, the first one is X prime or Y or Z prime. The next one is X prime or Y prime or Z prime. The next one is X or Y prime or Z the next is X or Y prime or Z prime. The next one is X. Well, we notice actually immediately notice that this term X or Y prime or Z prime is the same as this X or Y prime or Z prime. And any Boolean expression ended with itself is itself. So there's no need for us to write it down again. So I'll just skip this term here, the X, the second X or Y prime or Z prime term. I'll just skip that and get onto this. So we have X prime or Y prime or Z prime, uh, X or Y or Z. And the last term will be X or Y prime or Z. And now we want to, uh, for each one of those terms, we want to find that each one of these is a max term. And let's find the correct labels. And remember again, a max term is labeled according to when it's equal to zero. So we want one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero. So if we look at these uh, numbers, uh, as, as if we look at these as, as uh, binary numbers, this is five, seven, two, three, seven, zero, two. And you see, at, at least I find it particularly easy. Once we've identified these by number, or, you know, found the labels for them, then it's obvious to see that we have a couple of other repetitions. We have the two uh, repeated so we can get rid of one of those and we have seven repeated so we can get one rid of one of those and so now we can write down K 
capital M5, capital M7, capital M2, capital M3, capital M0. And as we've said before, we write these, uh, we, we traditionally write these in ascending order. So we have capital M0, capital M2, capital M3, capital M5, capital M7. And if we compare that to what we wanted at the top, there indeed, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 0, 2, 3, 5, and 7. So we have proven what we wanted to prove, and uh, of course it was a lot of algebra. We wouldn't ordinarily want to do that. It's so much easier just to look at the truth table, as we did right here, and uh, identify if we want to find, again, if we want to find a min-term expansion for a function, look for when it's equal to 1. If we want to find max-term expansion for a function, look for when it's equal to 0. And if you'll do that, you'll be in great shape. But uh, I, the reason that I think it was useful to look at this uh, algebraic uh, work is to see the importance of this identity right here, that A or Y ended with A or Y prime is the same as A. And that's particularly important down here when we want to uh, turn this product of sums expression into a max term expansion. So uh, that concludes that notion. I'd like to give you uh, one more quick problem uh, before looking at the uh, test problems for this lecture. So let's uh, suppose that the truth table for f of x, y, z is as follows. Okay, suppose then that that's the truth table for F. And let's suppose that we were uh, charged uh, in the following way. Find the um, min term and max term expansions. for both f and f prime. Now, I hope that you see that this is very easy, and so I very strongly encourage you to stop the video for a moment, try to do this on your own, and then come back. Okay, so here we are ready to do this uh, final problem in the lecture before learning about the uh, test for this lecture. And uh, the way that I would proceed is, follow, is as follows. Since um, we're going to need F prime in addition to F, I think I would go ahead and start by adding one more column to the truth table. I'll say F prime. And of course, nothing could be easier than finding F prime from F. Uh, it's simply, you know, zero complement is one and one complement is zero. So we get get that for f prime. Now, 
we want to find the min term and max term expansions for both of these functions. Well, uh, min term expansion for f. Remember, when we're looking at min terms, or when we're looking for a min term expansion, we look for when the function is equal to 1. And so we come over here and we have uh, little m1 board with little m2 board with little m5 board with little m7. That's the min term expansion for f. Since I'm running out of space, I'll come up here. Max term expansion for F. Well, recall that for max term expansion, we look when the uh, function is equal to zero. And uh, F is equal to zero, or zero, so we have capital M zero capital M3, capital M4, and capital M6. And notice actually, to be real honest with you, once you get this first one, the min term expansion, then you notice that the max term expansion, the, the um, subscripts that appear are just the ones that don't appear in the min term expansion. So really, once we have this first expression, we don't even need to glance at the truth table anymore. Once you get experience, you'll find out how to do that very quickly. And then uh, for f prime, well, f prime is just the complement of f. And so therefore, the min term expansion for f prime will simply be little m0 or with little m3 or with little m4 or with little m6 and likewise the max term expansion for f prime is capital M1 ended with capital M2 ended with capital M5 ended with capital M7 and, and now of course I was uh, to get these to do what I just did I used the fact that the min term and max term uh, well the min terms are are complements of the corresponding max term and vice versa but you can also again for the min term expansion for f prime, if you want to, you can just look at when the function is equal to 1. f prime is equal to 1 at 0, 3, 4, and 6. So that's why we have 0, 3, 4, 6. And down here for the max term expansion, look at when it's equal uh, to 0. And f prime is equal to 0 at 1, 2, 5, and 7. So we have 1, 2, 5, and 7 here. So that's how easy it is to find the min term or max term expansion for a function if you have this truth table. Nothing could be easier. So now we'll look at uh, the test problems for this lecture. So the uh, two test problems for this lecture are as follows. In 8.1 it says find the min term expansion for the function f of x, y, z is equal to x, y, or z. And your choices are A, capital M0 ended with capital M2 ended with capital M4. B, little m1 or with little m3 or with little m5 or with little m6 or with little m7. C, little m0, or little m2, or little m4, or D, capital M1, or capital M3, or capital M5, or capital M6, or capital M7.
that's 8.1. And then 8.2 is to find the max term expansion for the very same function. And the choices are A, capital M0, and to the capital M2, and to the capital M4, B, little m1, or with little m3, or with little m5, or with little m6, or with little m7, C, little m0, and it with little m2, and it with little m4, and finally uh, D, capital M1, and it with capital M3, and it with capital M5, and it with capital M6, and it with capital M7. And that concludes. Uh, well, good luck with your work, and that concludes Lecture 8.